Yes, late afternoon in old Manhattan, going home from work to their supper that their wives had prepared for them. But when the kingfish got home tonight, there was no supper ready. And believe me, he was really put out about it. And in the future, when I come home, I expect to find you here with my supper ready. Keep your big mouth shut. You listen to me. I tell you, you try a trick like this again, and I'll walk out of here so fast it'll make your head swim. You understand? And that's what I'm going to tell her as soon as she gets here. I want to tell you something. Yes, what is it? Uh, good evening, honey. I certainly am tired. Have you been somewhere, honey lamb? Have you been somewhere, honey? If it's any of your business, I've been to a meeting of the women's club. And after the meeting, I went home with Miss Winslow. She's one of our new members. Now, see yourself, huh? You're spending too much time with those old hens. Your face is here cooking supper. Miss Winslow has such a lovely character. What do I care? She's got such a charming personality. Look, I don't want you to have nothing to do with her personality or not. And she just come into $20,000. <laughs> When can I meet that charming creature? You say she just come in to twenty thousand dollars? Yes. The story's in the evening paper. She inherited the money from an uncle. The paper's on the coffee table. It's right there in the second section. <laughs> Mary, may you find 
happiness despite it. Yeah. Well, not to throw a wet blanket on things, but you know, I don't like the sound of this, Andy. You man a girl just cause she got money. After all, in marriage, money ain't everything. Yes, Amy, it may not be everything, but adding money to marriage is like putting orange juice in castor oil. It makes the whole mess a whole lot easier to take. <laughs> well, of course, it ain't none of my business. I just hope you're going to be happy, son. Well, don't worry about me. The kingfish is going to have Sapphire introduce me to the gal. Well, what makes you so sure this girl going to like you? Like me? Listen, they must down at the pool hall. They don't call me passion flower for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, honey, why won't you introduce Andy to Mrs. Winslow? Now, give me one good reason. Because Andy Brown is a no-good loafer. And since that article come out in the paper, Miss Winslow's got all kinds of suitors. Mm. You must be crazy to think that a woman with the money that Miss Winslow's got would be interested in anybody like Andy Brown. Well, I never looked at it like that. You can help me with the dishes. Why, you read about it in the society column every day where women with as much money as Mrs. Winslow has could buy themselves a European title. Hmm, a title. Buy ourselves a title. A title. Well, the first thing in the morning, I think I'll go over and have a talk with Baron Brown. <laughs> well, the next morning, with lightning's help, the kingfish really went to work on Baron Brown. Yeah, sir, for once, Lightning was really living up to his name. Oops, here he come again. That's right, Andy. You're right off the boat from Vienna. Okay, Kingfish, all set. Uh, my privilege. Allow me, Baron. Yeah. Make way for the Baron. the coat, Andy. Listen, Kingfish, I can't go through with this. I'm too nervous. Uh, take it easy, Andy. We got 20,000 bucks tied up here. But Kingfish, she ain't gonna think I know Baron. Oh, Andy, this gal is from the stick someplace. She ain't gonna know what's happening. All you gotta do is drop a few German words like Lieber Augustine and Wiener Schnitzel and stuff like that. Uh, you done told her we was coming, Kingfish? Oh, yeah. I done called up and give you a big build-up, son. A big build-up. Well, I hope she don't look as bad as a picture. That's all I got to say. Uh, by the way, Andy, in society, we, we run up against an object that will provoke boisterous laughter. Oh, yeah. But common politeness dictates that you do not laugh in the object's face. Yeah. According to Emily Post, you giggle into a handkerchief. Yeah, yeah. Oh, why, Mr. Stevens, won't you come in? I hope you haven't brought a handkerchief. Mrs. Winslow, it's my privilege to present to you that famous nobleman from Europe and the continent, Baron von Braunspiegel. Oh, how do you do, Baron? It is a pleasure to meet such a distinguished-looking man. Likewise. 
Oh. I took the liberty of having some tea made. Won't you sit down? <laughs> Listen to that. A jingle like that will make you independent for life. Gentlemen, won't you be seated? Tell me, so what made you decide to leave Vienna? Well, there was nothing left to do. You see, I never could get along very well with them foreigners. Foreigners? Oh, you see what the Baron means is, uh, although he's a genuine dyed in the wool Austrian Baron, he's also a neutralized American. Oh, I guess that's why you speak such good English, Baron. Oh, yeah. Actually, my father was a beautiful pedestrian, but my mother was born right here on the old side. <laughs> So I didn't have no trouble losing my German brogue or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, like all Europeans, the band family was pretty well spread out, especially my mama. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Stevens. Well, speaking of marriage, Miss Winslow, like we were doing, the band informed me that he's looking for a little baronet uh, to take back to the old country to share his ancestral chapeau. Well, I hope you find the right girl, Baron. Well, confidentially, the reason why the band is up here, he done seen your picture in the newspaper. Oh. <laughs> what does he think of me? Well, he mumbled a few words in his native tongue, then he's there shot up in the air like a German shepherd. <laughs> oh, Baron, you European men are so charming. Oh, fucking hell. I'm going to Yeah, you did too. You have another thing, Baron? Oh, Mr. Stevens, I can never thank you enough for bringing the Baron up today. He is just too wonderful. Well, I can tell that the Baron thinks you are charming, too. It ain't often that he condescends to mingle with the uh, hoy polluted. Well, I'll be running along, because I know you and the Baron got a lot of things to talk about. Oh, Mr. Stevens, must you be going? Well, according to the old slogan, three of the crowd. And I wouldn't want to interrupt any little love talk that you and the Baron has in regard to finances or nothing. Oh, no, 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 uh, never mind waddling to the door, I can find my own way out. <laughs> good day, Baron, and a uh, good one to you, too. Goodbye, Mr. Stevens. Well, toodaloo, all. <laughs> oh, Baron, tell me all about yourself. I know you had some wonderful, wonderful adventures. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget, forget the time when I was in Hamburg, and I was strolling down the route of this city, and I met the famous Sweden. Uh, how do you do? Uh, I said to him, how do you do, King? <laughs> ah, here we go. Dinner with Mrs. Winslow. your courtships of Miles Standish, it had nothing on the courtship of Andrew H. Brown. Yes, sir, Andy really played the part of a suave continental lover to perfection. Well, almost to perfection. And the next thing in order was Picnic with Elizabeth. With all lovers, there was dancing in the dark, moonlight walks, picnics, and rides in the country. Needless to say, all this activity made quite an impression on Mrs. Winslow. <laughs> and needless to say, Mrs. Winslow made quite an impression on the car. The boy is really closing in. <laughs> and then come the fatal evening when our gallant lover popped the question. Oh. Oh. Baron. 
Bill. 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 The kingfish is all set. The wedding takes place at high noon on Tuesday. Well, congratulations. Yeah. I'm glad you're figuring on a quick wedding. Otherwise, you're going to have creditors for flower girls. Yeah, maybe the thing to do is to have the wedding down in the bank vault. <laughs> <laughs> Say, where's Amos? I got to tell him the news. He thought I couldn't pull this thing off. Oh, he's out with a taxi cab somewhere. But I got to hand it to you, Baron. This proves that you are the lover boy of all time. 20,000 smackers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to show you. Uh, that's a down a quarter from the boulevard. All right, here you are. Keep the change. Thank you. Uh, you seen any time long, mister? Well, that depends. I'm looking up someone I haven't seen in a long, long time. That's my wife. You see, I left her 15 years ago. Oh, yeah? But this is enough to bring any husband back.
think we better sit down. This here problem is wearing out my rug. I tell you, Calhoun, me and Andy going in debt. We got over fifteen hundred dollars in bills. Andy just got to marry this gal. Now listen, fella. You shut up, Calhoun. We got to find some way to eliminate this other fella. Now what must we do? Calm down, fellas. Calm down. The thing to do is see which way the wind is blowing. I tell you, I'll get a hold of this fella Winslow and have him up here for a nice friendly chat. A nice friendly chat. <laughs> a nice friendly chat. That's what I asked you up here for, Mister. A nice friendly chat. Now don't you raise your voice at me again. Now see here, Mister. You done deserted this woman 15 years ago, and she done had you declared legally dead. And there ain't no way that you can legally touch this woman's money. I don't care about that. I got a pretty good nuisance value in this setup. <laughs> what do you mean? Ah, oh, listen, I don't give that for my ex-wife. All I'm interested in is money. Now, if this fellow Brown was to come up with, uh, uh, which say a thousand bucks, I'll go tell him you won't hear from me again. Now, wait a minute. A thousand bucks? Well, that's out the question. Listen, all I got to do is show my face, and Brown chances go down the drain. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, I'll put the proposition up to my client. All right. I'll give you till tomorrow noon. I'll go up and have a talk with him. And that's a thousand dollars cash. You understand? Yeah, sir. <laughs> In the future, I'm going to have to start wearing bow ties.
This is the United Nations building in New York City. Gathered here are representatives of nations from all over the world, carving out the destiny of mankind. This building has become an important attraction to out-of-town visitors, as well as the New Yorkers themselves. Ah, this is really some place, all right, ain't it, Andy? Yeah, it sure is. You know, that was a good idea of yours, Amos, of us doing a little sightseeing now and then. No, oh, yeah, I enjoy it, Andy. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting things in New York that I ain't never even seen. Oh, yeah. And when you stop to think of the museum, the zoo, and the Statue of Liberty, and the United Nations building here, yeah, why, it's an education right in itself. Oh, yeah. Hey, look at that. Oh. That is, man, it's the East River. You know, I'd like to see a lot more of this place. If only we could find out why they start to guide it to us. Yeah, we better ask somebody. Well, let's ask these fellas then. Uh, pardon me, sir, but could you tell me where your signs up for the guided tours? Ah, uh, scusatemi. Io non capisco che voi dite di sempre in Italia, ancora non parlo vostra lingua. Scusatemi. That subway we come on didn't take us out of the country, did it? Else, yeah, come on. Uh, pardon me, sir, but could you tell me where we signed up for the guided tours? A ver. Vayan ustedes hasta allí nada más. Se tomen el elevador que suba al segundo piso. Después, den vuelta a la derecha. Y ahí están. Allá se encuentran todos los agentes. <laughs> Let's go see the Statue of Liberty. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, sir, could you tell us where the guided tour starts? The first intelligent answer we've had. Andy, we just gonna have to find it ourselves. Yeah. Oh, pardon me, miss. But I wonder if you could tell us where the guided tour starts. We've been having a little trouble trying to find it here. Is you come from far? Huh? You come from far? Well, I don't know what you're saying, but I'm willing to learn. How about me? You haven't something to eat here. Uh, eat, you know. Oh, oui, on restaurant. Ah, ah, ah. Say, Amos, uh, why don't you run along on your sightseeing tour? Yeah, I know. And you want to see what you can do about untangling the foreign situation, huh? Yeah, well, uh, you don't mind, do you, Amos? Uh, you see, all my life, I've been wanting to meet a Hungarian gal. Good uh, morning, Miss King. Here's your mail. Oh, uh, thanks, Lightning. Uh, see, Lightning, where's Andy at these days? I ain't seen him around here lately. Uh, Andy, he, he's got a new old man. He went outside the other day and met some beautiful French-speaking gal. It, it, it seemed that this French gal can't talk no English. And Andy, he can't talk no French. Is that right? Mm-hmm. He, he asked me to look up a language school where he can learn what she's talking about. He ought to be down any minute, though. Mm, the boy is looking for a language school, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hi, Mr. Andy. Hi. Say, Lightning, did you find out anything about that French, uh... What is this all about? That sign on the door there and all this hugging and kissing. Well, Andy, maybe you ain't yet, but I done opened up a French-speaking school here. Well, it's a branch of that famous university, the Ile de France. Yeah, well, how come you in a thing like this? I never knowed you to know nothing about French. Well, Andy, you me and you may not know. As a child, I had a French governess who taught me everything from far out the car to hinky-dinky party-voo. <laughs> And on top of 
that, having a beret and everything, uh, I thought I might as well take advantage of the knowledge I done stopped up. English, I know you don't believe this, but it so happened that I'm looking for a school where I can learn how to speak French. Well, Andy, you don't tell me. That sure is a coincidence, all right, ain't it? Yeah, well, uh, how much you charge for lessons? Well, Andy, for the full course of lessons, I'll bring you up to uh, 150 francs. Uh, how much is that? Well, uh, let me see how I can explain this to you. How much money you got on you now, son? Well, let's see. Twenty-seven dollars. Well, I be doggone. That sure is a coincidence. Cause twenty-seven dollars just happened to be exactly a hundred and fifty francs. So why don't you just frank the stuff over and we we'll get rolling here? Yeah. Well, look, Kingfish, the reason that I want to learn this French is I done met a French gal the other day that I is crazy about. Oh, you don't tell me. Yeah, but I ain't making no headway with us. I figured if we know what each other was saying, uh, I might do better. Well, any the thing to do is learn her mother's tongue. Uh, now, let's get along with the first lesson. But, Andy, does you know anything about French at all? Yeah, well, I know a couple of words and things, uh, like, for instance, uh, uh, like when you tell the gal she's sweet, you say, Mon Cherry. Oh, no, no, Andy. You've got the wrong accent on there. In the French language, that ain't cherry. That's cherry. 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 Yeah, Andy, in the French language, the one where you don't accent the first syllable, you spray it. Oh. <laughs> cherry. Cherry. Oh, you're spraying good there, boy. <laughs> Miranda. Well, come on, let's get along with the next lesson. I want you to get the feel of the French language, Andy. So I'm going to run over a little song here. <laughs> It's that nitchel snitchel bank, yak das it a snitchel bank, snitchel bank, snitchel bank, old show, old show, old show, snitchel bank. Uh, this is French, huh, Kingfish? Oh, sure, and the genuine Castilian French. No, uh, it's that nitchel snitchel bank, yak das it a What is a snitchel bank? Well, Andy, uh, just what the word say, uh, for bank where you deposit snitchels. <laughs> the word, all right, but I don't think I'm going to ever get a chance to use it. Well, Andy, now you sing it with me this time. Yeah. There's it's not snitch, not snitch, 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 bank. Yeah, not snitch, 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 snitch. Oh, hello, Amos. Oh, uh, hi, fellas. Say, what's going on here? Well, uh, I was learning French, Amos, and I was doing pretty good, too. I already know where to deposit schnitzels if I ever get any. <laughs> that all out of your ears. That ain't French, it's German. German? Uh, uh, uh. Is you, uh, 100% sure of that, Amos? Why, certainly that's a German song. Well, that certainly fooled me. I know that I shouldn't never have trusted that French governess. Uh, Kingfish, what about my 150 francs? Well, Andy, we just change it over into marks and go on with the letter. He's got me oh, just oh, to hold it. Give me my money. Holy mackerel, Kingfish. Don't you ever get tired of trying to pull fast ones? Well, all right then. Yeah, there it is. Uh, say, what's all this French stuff for, Andy? Only the kind of gal you meant? Oh, yeah, Amos. And I head over heels in love with her, too. But I ain't making no time with her. We don't know what each other is saying. Well, maybe the problem ain't the language. Yeah, Andy, uh, maybe Amos got a point there. I believe I remember reading someplace uh, that uh, before you can make any headway with these foreign gals, you've got to get the seal of approval from their parents. Oh, so that's it, huh? Well, she don't seem to have no papa. Well, then the mama is the one you got to get in good with. Yeah. I got a date to go up there at 7 o'clock tonight, and I'll meet her mama. I'll start the campaign then. Well, so long, Kingfish. Hello, oh, Amos. Hello, oh, Andy. Hey, but Andy, you wouldn't want to buy a beret, would you? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Amos.
Martha, did you ever wear one of these things? Now, nah, please, Kingfish. <laughs> Colette? Colette! Il m'est certain! Mais oui, maman! J'arrive! Est-ce que c'est pour tenir la robe? Ah, mais bien sûr, ma chérie. Merci. Je l'attends à tout moment. As-tu amoureuse de Moshe Brown? Ah, il est vieux! Je joue comme pas. Ce n'est qu'un copain pour s'amuser. Ça doit être à lui qui va. Oui, c'est lui. Hello, honey. How is you? Bonsoir, Monsieur Andy. Quel plaisir de vous voir. Oh, uh, hello, my cherry. Oui, je vous présente ma mère. Uh, oh, your mama, yeah, yeah. Maman, voici donc André Brown. Monsieur Brown? Comment allez-vous? Uh, oh, yeah, Mama, you know, I'm so glad to meet you. <laughs> you were just as nice as your daughter. Ah, you may pass it, you. Maybe, maybe I'm grown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I was a dog, all right. <laughs> You know, I sure is glad to meet Colette's mama. Mmm, <laughs> something smells good. Uh, what is we having for dinner? Imagine cook some pot. Uh, dinner. Eat. You know, mama, my girl, she feels so fair to me. That's right, eat. Oh, my mama. You know, Colette, your mama show sure is nice. <laughs> ah, this is the life. Ah. <laughs> oh, is this the first course? You say pas que c'est. Show has been a wonderful evening. Well, I'll be going now. Good night, both of you. Andre. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bonsoir, Andre. Good night, Colette. <laughs> Good night. Maman, as-tu remarqué la même chose que moi ce soir? Comment tu dire? Il parut plus intéressé en toi que moi. Je la remarque aussi. Maman, il t'aime toi comme moi. Oui. <laughs> Il était très gentil. Il ferait un mari parfait pour toi. <laughs> Andy, you really got it bad, ain't ya? But tell me this. Is you picking on proposing to the girl? Yeah, and that's what's got me kind of worried. Andy, you worried about proposing? A man who spent more time on one knee than he has on both his feet? Well, I admit, Kingfish, that I have preposed to a lot of American gals, but this is the first time I ever dabbled with the import trade. Well, and me, there's one thing I know about these foreign gals. You got to ask their mama for the daughter's hand in marriage. Yeah, but her mama don't speak no English. How is I going to make her understand I want to marry her daughter? Well, and me, it's a funny thing about that word marriage with women. Well, what's that, Kingfish? Well, you can say it in Italian, you can say it in German, you can say it in Chinese, and you can say it in Romanian. You can say it frontward, sideways, or backward. But for some reason or other, they all seem to know what it means. Nous sommes ici que depuis quelques mois, et nous ne connaissons personne ici. Oui, mais nous sommes très de revenu de nature. Vous êtes aussi, gentil monsieur. Yeah, well, that all sounds very interesting, even if I don't know what you're saying, but... <laughs> Look, try to understand this. Me, Andrew Brown, want your permission to marry... Marry? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Oh, thanks, 
for your permission. <laughs> oh, this is the happiest day of my life. Oh, I guess I have to get used to these French customs. Now you, Papa. Oh, yeah. Uh, now that everything's all set, uh, I'm so nervous, I guess I better go and get everything ready so the wedding can take place as soon as possible. Uh, good day. But who day? Goodbye. You love for me, and I'll say the illusion now. The two bony day. Well, how was the great lover this morning? Kingfish, I ain't stopped a minute since yesterday when Madame Duval gave me permission to marry Colette. Oh, I've been making arrangements, huh? That's right. Well, Andy, I've just been reading the paper here. Here's your wedding announcement in here already. Oh, it is, huh? Let me see it. Brown Duval. Arrangements are being made for the forthcoming marriage of Andrew H. Brown and uh, Madame Duval. Say, Kingfish. Hmm? What's the difference between Madame and Mademoiselle? Well, uh, Andy, the both words start with uh, Madame, but I think the big difference is the Oiselle. Yeah, but uh, what is the Oiselle? Well, now, as I recall, uh, the Oiselle means that the gal is still single. Hmm, says Madame, yeah. But I guess the newspapers made a typographical error. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. this will solve the whole thing. There's a picture of the bride. <laughs> Holy smoke. I was engaged to marry Mrs. Duval. Andy, how in the world could you do a stupid thing like that? Well, you was the one that told me to get your mama's permission. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Holy smoke. Oh, this permission stuff. It's a good thing the papa wasn't alive. Or I might be engaged to marry him right now. Look, <laughs> be blaming people. You had really got a mess on your hands. Yeah, but what is I going to do? I can't tell Mrs. Duval that it's all a mistake, or she'll have the French government on me or something. Well, fellas, how is he? Uh, terrible, Calhoun. Andy done found out that he proposed to the wrong woman. Uh, he's lucky. A lot of fellas don't find that out until after they marry. <laughs> it ain't that kind of a thing. I done fell in love with a French gal, and by some mistake, I is now engaged to her mama. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You was engaged to marry the mother of the gal you was in love with? That's right. <laughs> sure gonna make an interesting honeymoon. <laughs> I don't know what to do, Calhoun. I don't know what to tell the old gal. Her and her daughter is on their way over here right now to make arrangements for the wedding. Well, what about you and Colette? Listen, Kingfish, if Colette wants to pawn me off on her mama, it means that I don't mean nothing to her. Well, I don't know. Hey, look, fellas. Here they come, fellas. <laughs> Calhoun, you got to do something for the boy. Wait a minute, fellas. Don't get me mixed up in this. I, I, I wouldn't know what to tell him. Tell him anything. Tell him I've been married before. Yeah, tell him he done murdered his first wife. That ought to be right. <laughs> Wait a minute, fellas. Look, Calhoun, you got to do this for me. Come on, Kingfish. Let's go out the back way. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Fine kettle of fish. Coming here for a nice social visit and... I do. Le Boulevard, Monsieur Andre Brown. Oui, et de Uh, Brown, Brown. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I take it you're the woman he's engaged to. And is I glad I see you in time. I got a lot to tell you. Of course, I hate to tell you this about the man you's engaged to, but this man Brown is a killer. You're my like papa. Qu'est-ce qu'il veut nous raconter? Je ne sais pas. Hmm, this is going to be a lot tougher than I thought it was. <laughs> sit down, girls. I say, sit down. Sit down, you know, sit down. Sit down. Yeah, sit down. Sit down. Yeah, 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 sit down. Now, let me put it to you this way, girls. You see, this Andrew H. Brown has been married before, but he killed his wife. I say, he killed his wife. Look, let me show you. Good. Bang, bang, bang. His wife. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you have shot me. You have shot me, your bride of only two hours. <laughs> bang, bang.
And then adding insult to injury, after he shot her, he decided to give her poison. I don't. Yeah, poison, poison. I'll show you. See here? Glass. Water. Glug, 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 glug. <laughs> and poisoned her, as if that wasn't enough, he changed into a monster and decided to give it the finishing touches. Like that. <laughs> 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 you think you can anyway? You got your nerve. <laughs> like I got to go at this from a different angle. Look, gal. Now, this man Brown is a murderer, but I'm going to show you how he operates. Come here, come here, come here. He come up to you and make violent love to you to make you think he's a nice fella. My dear, get a Johnson. And then he snuggle up real close to you like this to make you think he's crazy about you. Ah, oh, Mama, you first killed Tim O'Dea. Yeah, he, he, he tell him all the same thing. Sugar, you was the most beautiful woman I have ever met. Then after he gets you all softened up and get you in a romantic mood, he tell you, I love you. I love you. You mama! You mama! Wait, they cut the food. Oh, maman, maman. Look, y'all understand that? Oh, oui, monsieur. Nous comprenons. I know that'll do it. I mean, no. A phone, the return, Don Ray Brown. So, she'll have a trip to eat. Bien. What's going on here? <laughs> Calhoun, so we can find out what happened when Colette and Ms. Duval come in here. Yeah, it's been an hour since they come in, and I think he should at least uh, tell us how it come out. Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe they... <laughs> Calhoun, what happened? I don't know. But whatever it was, it was terrible. Oh, what do you mean? Well, I, I was trying to get him off of Andy's neck. But somewhere along the line, they got the idea that I wanted to marry the old girl. I got out of there just in the nick of time. Andy, she's still yours. Oh, me. I'm still in a mess. They need a one. They got the sense you were born with. And as you do, look like I got to straighten the thing out. Andy, you definitely don't want the old girl. No, Kingfish, I don't want no part of her. Okay, I'll go up there and settle this thing once and for all. I'm going to give it to him straight from the shoulder. Yeah, I think that's the best thing to do, Kingfish. Make him understand the situation. Yeah, and I'll let you boys know what happened. <laughs> Hey, Kingfish, how'd you make out yesterday when you went up to see Mrs. Duval? Oh, great, Andy. I just took my time and I made it clear to her that you weren't interested in her. And the whole thing was a mistake. Well, thank goodness for that. Kingfish, I don't know what I'd do without you sometime. Well, Andy, I just used my head. Now, these things can be done if they approach with a certain amount of intelligence. Yeah, well, I got to hand it to you, son. <laughs> Kingfish. What is it, Amos? Look. Holy mackerel, they got me, man, the old gal. <laughs>
Bible has could buy themselves a European title. Hmm, a title. Buy ourselves a title. Well, the first thing in the morning, I think I'll go and have a talk with Baron Brown. <laughs> well, the next morning, with lightning's help, the kingfish really went to work on Baron Brown. Yes, sir, for once, lightning was really living up to his name. Come again. Well, it looks like the lily is really being guilty. That's right, Andy. You're right off the boat from Vienna. Okay, Kingfish, all set. Uh, my privilege. Allow me, Baron. Yeah. Make way for the Baron. the coat, Andy. Listen, Kingfish, I can't go through with this. I'm too nervous. Well, take it easy, Andy. We got 20,000 bucks tied up here. But Kingfish, she ain't gonna think I know Baron. Oh, Andy, this gal is from the stick someplace. She ain't gonna know what's happening. All you gotta do is drop a few German words like Lieber Augustine and Wiener Schnitzel and stuff like that. Well, you done told her we was coming, Kingfish? Oh, yeah. I done called up and give you a big build-up, son. A big build-up. Well, I hope she don't look as bad as a picture. That's all I got to say. Uh, by the way, Andy, in society, we, we run up against an object that will send it to tape. As I was saying, uh, 40% of the tape. Come on, Kingfish. Let's go out and get a cup of coffee to celebrate my engagement. But Andy, don't you think it would cut down on the traffic if you moved that bureau down there? No, it's better the way it is. Come on. Why, you read about it in the 
society column every day where women with as much money as Mrs. Winslow has could buy themselves a European title. Hmm, a title. Buy ourselves a title. Well, the first thing in the morning, I think I'll go and have a talk with Baron Brown. <laughs> well, the next morning, with lightning's help, the kingfish really went to work on Baron Brown. Yes, sir, for once, lightning was really living up to his name. Come again. See what the dish is. Why, you read about it in the society column every day where women with as much money as Mrs. Winslow has could buy themselves a European title. Hmm, a title. Buy ourselves a title. in the morning, I think I'll go and have a talk with Baron Brown. <laughs> well, the next morning, with lightning's help, the kingfish really went to work on Baron Brown. Yes, sir, for once, lightning was really living up to his name. Oops, here he come again. That's right, Andy. You're right off the boat from Vienna. Okay, Kingfish, all set. Uh, my privilege. Allow me, Baron. Yeah. Make way for the Baron. the coat, Andy. Listen, Kingfish, I can't go through with this. I'm too nervous. Well, take it easy, Andy. We got 20,000 bucks tied up here. But Kingfish, she ain't gonna think I know Baron. Oh, Andy, this gal is from the stick someplace. She ain't gonna know what's happening. All you gotta do is drop a few German words like Lieber Augustine and Wiener Schnitzel and stuff like that. Well, you done told her we was coming, Kingfish? Well, one, I'll show you. See here? Glass. Water. Glug, 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 glug. As if that wasn't enough, he changed into a monster and decided to give it the finishing touches. Like that. <laughs> that 
you can anyway. You got your nerve. <laughs> like I got to go at this from a different angle. Look, gal. Now, this man Brown is a murderer, but I'm going to show you how he operates. Come here, come here, come here. He come up to you and make violent love to you to make you think he's a nice fella. My yeah, you're a Johnson. And then he snuggle up real close to you like this to make you think he's crazy about you. Ah, oh, Mamma, you first killed Tim of me. Yeah, he, 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 he tell him all the same thing. Sugar, you was the most beautiful woman I have ever met. I was, Sherry. Yeah, <laughs> Then after he get you all softened up and get you in a romantic mood, he tell you, I love you. I love you. Kill me, ma. Kill me. Wait. Then a colorful room, my mom, my mom. Look, y'all understand that? Oh, we really, monsieur. Look, on I know. I know that'll do it. <laughs> I mean, no. I phone the return down the brown. So, she le faire a tout sweet. Bien. Yeah. Yeah. What's going yeah. on here? Calhoun, so we can find out what happened when Colette and Ms. Duval come in here. Yeah, it's been an hour since they come back. Oh, you don't tell me. Yeah, but I ain't making no headway with us. I figured if we knowed what each other was saying, uh, I might do better. Well, any the thing to do is learn her mother's tongue. Uh, now, let's get along with the first lesson. But, Andy, does you know anything about French at all? Yeah, well, I know a couple of words and things. Uh, like, for instance, uh, uh, like when you tell the gal she's sweet, you say, Mon Cherry. Oh, no, no, Andy. You got the wrong accent on there. In the French language, that ain't cherry. That's cherry. <laughs> cherry. <laughs> cherry. Cherry. Yeah, and in the French language, the one where you don't accent the first syllable, you spray it. Oh. <laughs> cherry. Cherry. Oh, you're spraying good there, boy. <laughs> Miranda. Well, come on, let's get along with the next lesson. I want you to get the feel of the French language, Andy. So I'm going to run over a little song here. Is that Nitsch or Snitchel Bank? Yak das is not Snitchel Bank. Snitchel Bank, Snitchel Bank. Oh, do show, oh, do show, oh, do show, Snitchel Bank. Uh, this is French, huh, Kingfish? Oh, sure, Andy. Genuine Castilian French. No, uh, <laughs> is that Nitsch or Snitchel Bank? Yeah, das is Wait that. Wait a minute, kid. What is a Snitchel Bank? Well, Andy, uh, just what the words say. Uh, it's a bank where you deposit schnitzels. It's <laughs> word, all right, but I don't think I'm going to ever get a chance to use it. Well, Andy, now you sing it with me this time. Yeah. There's a schnitzel, schnitzel bank. Yeah, there's a schnitzel. Oh, hello, Amos. Oh, uh, hi, fellas. Say, what's going on here? Well, uh, I was learning French, Amos, and I was doing pretty good, too. I already know where to deposit schnitzels if I ever get any. <laughs> that all out of your head. That ain't French, it's German. German? Uh, uh, uh. Is you, uh, 100% sure of that, Amos? Why, certainly that's a German song. Well, that certainly fooled me. I know that I shouldn't never have trusted that French governess. Uh, Kingfish, what about my 150 francs? Well, and then we just change it over into marks and go on with the letter. It's got me oh, to slip to hold it. Give me my money. Holy mackerel, Kingfish. Don't you ever get tired of trying to pull fast ones? Well, all right then. Yeah, there it is. Uh, say, what's all this French stuff for, Andy? Only the kind of gal you meant? Oh, yeah, Amos. Nice. With as much money as Mrs. Winslow has could buy themselves a European title.
Hmm, a title. Buy yourself a title. A title. Well, the first thing in the morning, I think I'll go and have a talk with Baron Brown. <laughs> Well, the next morning, with lightning's help, the kingfish really went to work on Baron Brown. Yes, sir, for once, lightning was really living up to his name. Oops, here he come again. That's right, Andy. You're right off the boat from Vienna. Okay, Kingfish, all set. Uh, my privilege. Allow me, Baron. Yeah. Make way for the Baron. Drop a few German words like Lieber Augustine and Wiener Schnitzel and stuff like that. Well, you done told her we was coming, Kingfish? Oh, yeah. I done called up and give you a big build-up, son. A big build-up. Well, I hope she don't look as bad as a picture. That's all I got to say. Uh, by the way, Andy, in society, we, we run up a... Uh, why don't you run along on your sightseeing, too? Yeah, I know. And you want to see what you can do about untangling the foreign situation, huh? Yeah, well, uh, you don't mind, do you, Amos? Uh, you see, all my life, I've been wanting to meet a Hungarian gal. Good uh, morning, Mr. Kingfish. Here's your mail. Oh, uh, thanks, Lightning. Uh, see, Lightning, where's Andy at these days? I ain't seen him around here lately. Uh, Andy, he, he's got a new old man. He went out sightseeing the other day and met some beautiful French-speaking gal. It, it, it seemed that this French gal can't talk no English, and Andy, he can't talk no French. Is that right? Mm-hmm. He, he asked me to look up a language school where he can learn what she's talking about. He ought to be down any minute, though. Mmm, the boy looking for a language school, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hi, Mr. Andy. Hi. Say, like it. Did you find out anything about that French, uh... <laughs> 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 What is this all about? That sign on the door there and all this hugging and kissing. Well, Andy, maybe you ain't here, but I done opened up a French speaking school here. Well, it's a branch of that famous university, the Ile de France. Yeah, well, how come you in a thing like this? I never know you to know nothing about French. Well, Andy, you may and you may not know. As a child, I had a French governess who taught me everything from far odds, a car, to hinky dinky party vous. 
<laughs> and on top of that, having a beret and everything, uh, I thought I might as well take advantage of the knowledge I done stopped up. Kingfish, I know you don't believe this, but it so happened that I'm looking for a school where I can learn how to speak French. Well, Andy, you don't tell me. That sure is a coincidence, all right, ain't it? Yeah, well, uh, how much you charge for lessons? Well, Andy, for the full course of lessons, I'll bring you up to uh, 150 francs. Uh, how much is that? Well, uh, let me see how I can explain this to you. How much money you got on you now, son? Well, let's see. Twenty-seven dollars. Well, I be doggone. That sure is a coincidence. Got twenty-seven... Baron? Well, confidentially, the reason why the band is up here, he done seen your picture in the newspaper. Oh. <laughs> what does he think of me? Well, he mumbled a few words in his native tongue, then his ear shot up in the air like a German shepherd. <laughs> oh, Baron, you European men are so charming. So perfect. I'm the Yeah, you did too. Another cake, Baron? Oh, Mr. Stevens, I can never thank you enough for bringing the Baron up today. He is just too wonderful. Well, I can tell that the Baron thinks you are charming, too. <laughs> it ain't often that he condescends to mingle with the uh, hoy polluted. Well, I'll be running along because I know you and the band got a lot of things to talk about. Oh, Mr. Stevens, must you be going? Well, according to the old slogan, three of the crowd. And I wouldn't want to interrupt any little love talk that you and the band has in regards to finances or nothing. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, never mind while into the door. I can find my own way out. <laughs> good day, Baron. And a uh, good one to you, too. Goodbye, Mr. Stevens. Well, toodle all. <laughs> oh, Baron, tell me all about yourself. I know you had some wonderful, wonderful adventures. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget, forget the time when I was in Hamburger and I was strolling down the route of this city and I met the King of Sweden. And the King of Sweden said, Baron, he uh, how do you do? I said to him, how do you do, King? He said, how do you Ah, here we go. Dinner with Mrs. Winslow. your courtships of Miles Standish. It had nothing on the courtship of Andrew H. Brown. Yes, sir, Andy really played the part of a suave continental lover to perfection. Well, almost to perfection. And the next thing in order was picnic with Elizabeth. in the dark, moonlight walks, picnics, and rides in the country. Needless to say, all this activity made quite an impression on Mrs. Winslow. And needless to say, Mrs. Winslow made quite an impression.
English. I don't want to marry no middle-aged woman. No, no, Andy, that's just a kind. That's just a kind to marry. When a woman uh, reaches middle age, she just enters into the gentle and romantic era of her life. That wonderful loveliness that only comes with approaching middle age. I tell you, Andy, when it comes to companionship, there's nothing nicer than a woman who is around 60 and sweet. Yeah, but when it comes to smooching, I'd rather stick to the kind that's 19 and nasty. <laughs> I got just a woman for you, Andy, a Mrs. Elizabeth Winslow. Feast your eyes upon that lovely creature. Well, it's my privilege to inform you that that toad is worth in the neighborhood of $5,000 a watt. Say, Kingfish, what is that financial remark you dropped in the conversation? Andy, there's more than man this gal than meets the human eye. Andy, has you ever known the warmth and the companionship of $20,000? Hmm, $20,000. You know, Kingfish, she done got awful put in the last few seconds. Yeah, would you be interested in a gal like that, Andy? Me interested in a gal just because she's got $20,000? <laughs> when can I meet her? Now you're talking, son. But remember, Andy, when you marry a gal, I get your usual introduction fee, 35% of the tape. As I was saying, uh, 40% of the tape. Well, listen, honey, why won't you introduce Andy to Mrs. Winslow? Now, give me one good reason. Because Andy Brown is a no-good loafer. And since that article come out in the paper, Miss Winslow's got all kinds of suitors. Mm. You must be crazy to think that a woman with the money that Miss Winslow's got would be interested in anybody like Andy Brown. Well, I never looked at it like that. You can help me with the dishes. You read about it in the society column every day where women with as much money as Mrs. Winslow has could buy themselves a European title. Hmm, a title. Buy herself a title. Oh. A title. Well, the first thing in the morning, I think I'll go and have a talk with Baron Brown. <laughs> well, the next morning, with lightning's help, the kingfish really went to work on Baron Brown. Yeah, sir, for once, lightning was really living up to his name. Oops, here he come again. Oh, Baron, tell 
tell me all about yourself. I know you had some wonderful, wonderful adventures. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget, forget the time when I was in Hamburg, and I was strolling down the route in this city, and I met the king of Sweden. And the king of Sweden said, uh, Aaron, he uh, how do you do? Uh, I said, Jim, how do you do, king? He <laughs> said, Ah, here we go. Dinner with Mrs. Winslow. <laughs> well, talk about your courtships of Miles Standish. It had nothing on the courtship of Andrew H. Brown. Yes, sir, Andy really played the part of a suave continental lover to perfection. Well, almost to perfection. And the next thing in order was picnic with Elizabeth. Yes, as with all lovers, there was dancing in the dark, moonlight walks, picnics, and rides in the country. Needless to say, all this activity made quite an impression on Mrs. Winslow. And needless to say, Mrs. Winslow made quite an impression on the car. The boy is really closing in. <laughs> and then come the fatal evening when our gallant lover popped the question. on a quick wedding, otherwise you're going to have creditors for flower girls. Yeah, maybe the thing to do is to have the wedding down in the bank vault. <laughs> Say, where's Amos? I got to tell him the news. He thought I couldn't burn his... You see, I left her 15 years ago. Oh, yeah? But this is enough to bring any husband back. Uh, do you know where he is? Uh, yeah, I know where he is. Well, I mean, where did he go? Uh, where did who go? Andy McKingfish. Oh, man. Uh, uh, they, they went over to the Eli Binney to get some uh, breakfast. Oh, yeah, Kingfish. Two days from now, me and Miss Winslow wander us down the aisle together. Yeah, this calls for a little ham and eggs. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, joint kind of crowded, Andy. Yeah, there's there, there, there a table over in the corner with a couple of empty seats. Yeah. yeah. Do you mind if we sit here, mister? No. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is all right. Uh, uh double on a ham and eggs, do I think after the wedding, I'm going on a steady diet of filet mignon. <laughs> <laughs> have to excuse my friend here. He's getting himself inoculated up. Mm. Yeah, but confidentially, mister, the old goat eyes man is loaded with money. Well, that makes it nice. Yeah, but me and my friend here are really going to take that guy out for a ride. Oh, yeah. We're going to live off the fat of the land. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, mister, the wedding is all set. 
perpetuity. And me and my friends start going through our money from there. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, I'll be back in a minute. Uh, don't be long, Kingfish. <laughs> yes. I tell you, mister, I... 